Chish, which in a has a tea, yag, sark to yak a yakhan, stick at you on. Gunch chish, kakte y the goody. Yakanakayak a which in has a tea. Chitle a yak with the goody, a yakanakayak a. A atina kay tea. A train koo, a yukatangi dart. Yan has nak. Johan Konachoe Yen Yinakoe, how you a tangi dart, Kap Konachoe at a tea necha your tea. How you a tangi nu woo he said tea. Ye away after woods ya ye dat. Catch a good coo woo aya. Hagurs ye hagurs a necha or how you a tangi ye away after woods. A joe took a gach to ark. Ya kusachan katisha antin, ya ha yu retangish to tul tu. A chago kago owe has to e nija hwanean, has to darte yu tachotank, chako yu tachotank nuch. Ya aho a hanakaswo a di a. Tay de he newe kahon ish. Hat yo saka, ye hat yo saka, a duchsa. Hat the chanki and has to eat gurtle too, how you got tongue. You han, I ya, ye got what he. Kirnetsu Ye ha yo saka. Just you han away, how you got tongue ye dart. Yen ye knock. Yen de gach ye knock away, ye away. Or two ye gay testers. Jayego ginky ah. Atlain, ye ha gurse tea. Ye ha shagur da ha, ye owe after a tea. Gunchish, you han, gunchish. Ye ha goes a da da say to us a go way to nigu you hatangi, but to chitin you hatangi. It's great to see everybody. I'm so happy that we're together. I'm always happy when we're together. Um, let's see what I say. It's you guys are really standing up for our language. One time, Nora gave us a speech and she said, It's not going to be anyone else. It's just going to be you standing up for our language. So, you all are like the walls of the fortress uh, around our language. And I'm really grateful for that. And that I feel like it's not going to be just a little tiny bit of us. There's going to be many of us. There's going to be a time when there's so many of us. And we'll be able to tease people about classifiers and stem variations oh you're just learning that yeah i remember those days when i was drifting out to sea with my rudder trying to find what was going on with this thing and that thing and kakonish george davis one time he said who's who's gonna teach our grandchildren and i i think it's you i think it's you and that's what we're here for and i'm really happy that we're we're doing this again you know Winters are long and cold and dark, and COVID is just the, the never-ending story that we don't want to be in anymore. And so it's, it's good to just have these moments. So we're going to decipher a couple of sentences here with a kind of longer phrases that um, some folks asked me for yesterday. Two different people asked me for two different things. And one is like kind of an inspirational message, and one is really sad. So what do you want to do first? The sad thing or the inspirational thing? And that last last night they said, let's do the sad thing first. Yeah, and yeah let's run. Inspiration. You want to go that route? Yeah, yeah let's end on a high note. <laughs> okay. Watch something funny after. So let's do sad thing and then inspirational. I was going to say the same thing. Watch a scary movie, then cartoon before you go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> or do the inspiration on both sides start with it <laughs> then we review it after oh, the sad thing <laughs> so we get a double dose of it <laughs> okay i'll put this in the chat and i'll put it on the screen so here it comes where's that so i'll, I'll read it and then you folks can tell me what it what it's saying <laughs> Any thoughts on this? 
Was Gao, is that drum or time? This one will be time. How's We're it? together, which in. Yep, together. There's a couple of things together. Cake is dog, right? It's dog. Naga. Is that come here? It's Naga. what is go. Oh go. Oh. Okay. And then duck day. Is um Iquasatin um you will see? I will see you. I will see you. Yeah, and it's got to have the yay in front of it. We'll get to that this semester. Why is the yay there? Uh, duck day into the inland. Yep. So, duck day naku cake. Go inland, dog. Or you could translate that as go into the forest. Which in un is that we will go hunting? We'll go, we'll go hunting together. And what's anybody know what chakut is? Anybody hear that one? I've heard of chagutsa, and my mom literally just said this to me. I can't. Um, akat sewa ach. Akat sewa. A uh, chakut is a different one. So if you say chakuta, a different one, right? Like if uh, we're trying to name someone, you're like, oh yeah, is that so and so? It's like chakuta. So chakut gao would be, we'll go hunting together another time. So is this, I'm feeling like this is like saying goodbye to a dog? Yeah, someone has an old dog and they're going to have to put it down. And they asked me for like a, the last thing I could say to my dog. I was like, how sad is that? I was like, I'd be happy to write it because, you know, I have a dog. I love dogs and I, I've got a cat. And I love cats too. And so I, I would say something to my dog if, yeah, if I was putting it down. And so go into the woods, dog. We'll go hunting together some other time. What about Wuchin Ashka Gachtulchet? Together we'll play. We'll play together. Yeah, we'll play together uh, and then dog. Yep. And then Dakte Naku Ashukach. Go into the woods to the end. Is Shukach ancestors or is that Shukat? Well, Hashuka is ancestors. Mm. But then Ashukach would be ahead of. Ahead of. And so that, that could, like, if if that was anywhere else, like you could say, walk ahead of me towards there. But be, now we've already framed the context. So it's like, Kind of letting your dog know, like you go, I stay. Then I'll see you there. Yeah. So there you go. There's the, there's your old Yeller moment right there, Yeller Sean. And <laughs> so we did it last. I was like, man, I gotta share this with the students because too it's too sad. But you know, sometimes you gotta. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a someone who's a slinget speak. Don't me. laugh, anyone. This is actually very useful because um, my uh, um her two-year-old dog. We don't know if she suddenly was sick or something, but she, out of nowhere, completely attacked my nephew, who's four years old, bit yeah. his face, yeah. and um, so they had. Um, there was the option to like surrender her and let her be euthanized over a period of time but uh they decided to do them do it themselves and like do a little thing and so my sister was obviously devastated because that was also her emotional support animal and so I I didn't I didn't know how to help it was literally the day after Christmas that happened and so um like my niece and nephew are absolutely like just devastated and so I told my sister I was like I don't know if like this works if we're allowed to do this but like 
to help the babies grieve like maybe we'll do like a like a 40 day kind of thing and we'll practice singing some songs and then we'll sing to the dog one more time and uh, I guess I'll also practice this one with my sister yeah you know I mean it's a language of use and it's got these very you know I've had conversations like this with human beings and I've had conversations like this with animals and it's a very real thing but it's also like you know, I had to tell my mom, you know, well, mom, whatever happens after this, go, go to the forest. If you don't know where to go, you go to the forest. That's what they told us, you know. And so it is, it's heavy stuff. And it's, but it's also thinking about how could you use the language? And, and there's, some of this is metaphor. Some of this is maybe wishful thinking, but some of this could be like your true beliefs as well. As you sort of look at these things and, um, yeah, that happened to my neighbor, you know, his his dogs, for whatever reason, attacked these kids and put them in the hospital. And there were two dogs and two neighbors and one neighbor, she, she thought for a long time and finally surrendered her dog. Uh, but he took his dog right out the road and did the job. And he was a wreck for a few days, you know, but uh, sometimes that's a tough part of being a dog owner, too, is, is you have to make those hard decisions. And, with that, we will look at the other message. Now, I don't want to just bring everybody down right at the beginning. Too. So here's a longer one, uh, and we'll read it and go through, and I'll have you folks uh, solve the puzzle. What's it for? And Kitakatyuhan, Kachwasaha to Wu, Kekai Kach, Skoon, Kay Noa Atunachia Kachi Art, On Ganins, Squash Ehun, Kian Yate. Ye ye guchletish, call ye in her guchsati. Chetlak away, wooch in her nastich. Push the yahwasa ha eat, na say ye eat ye, wooch in her nastich. Could you please put that in the chat? Oh, yeah, I will. In the cheese. In the cheese. Okay, let's go sentence by sentence. Just anything we can grab. Just to cut you, Han, all of you. Yep. Uh, is that like, um, it's kind of like, I don't know, right? Well, Kishwasa or... is it's okay, but Kishwasa is a little different. And if we don't know, I'm happy to tell you. Anybody know what kachwasa? So much. Yeah, how very much. Is usually, I, I, how very much is, is the way I might translate that, or how very, kind of depends on what comes after. But it's it's really ramping up the verb. Which is how, how very mind. much we are proud of you. Yep. So all of you how very proud we are of you all. Uh, school, big, tunach is through. Any thoughts? You're going? To yeah, future? yeah. So the and it gets a bit of a prefix on there. The atunachyagachyat. That means you all are going to go through it, and it, it could mean like something like school, like you're going to make it through school. But this is something, and you could say atunachyakigu. There's a singular version of it, but that's on its own is something you could say. Like sometimes when you're trying to encourage someone. Like, let's say they've got to do a difficult thing. And sometimes you got to say, well, you're going to do it, you know? And so that that's a phrase you could use for like, you, you're, you might go through a hard time, you might go through a trial, but you, you're going to make it through there is basically what you're saying. So in this case, when you add something like schoon claim, which would be like college or something, uh, so you all are going to go to school. But it's basically saying like 
you're going to make it through there too. We'll do this first part. Those two phrases put together. That Kuni friends. If your friends. We're friends. And it's Quash. I'm thinking perhaps now. Uh, that perhaps that's what I thought. Yep. Perhaps. Sometimes. One Kunin. So yep. Sometimes perhaps your friends. Thoughts on this one? I remember seeing Yan Ya Di, but I can't remember what it means. Ya Di there? Sorry. In this case, Ya Di is uh, to their faces. And then we get the verb. I know it's thus plural will, but I don't know what. Mm. I think it's future. It is future. Wushetish is the perfective of this. It means to be bored or lonely. So in this case, sometimes you will be lonely for your friends. And I've heard something like this said two ways with Echun Kiyan would be your friends. Ya de to their face. I've also heard Echun Kiyan Ika. So like kind of waiting for them. Ye ye guchatish, you'll be lonely. Ah. Yep. So, um, however, ye in to you all, ha our guch. Oops. Well, Mr. Val. You don't recognize the verb. Guch What about the sati or guch sati? What's that? Ta'i. Oh, there's, I didn't miss the vowel. I put it in the wrong spot. <laughs> Oops. We will be there for you. We will be with you. We will be with you. Can I share a story that this is like making me think of? So um, this school year that we're in, um, I was coming back from Huna. I had to take the ferry and bring all my stuff back from my sister's house, bring my dog and everything. And it really hit me after um, I unloaded all of my stuff waiting at the ferry terminal that I was leaving. And I got really bummed out and um, it didn't hit me until I was actually on the ferry. My dog was down on the lower deck. I was sitting in the TV room by myself. I just started bawling my eyes out because I wasn't ready to leave yet. And um, the, the ferry had taken off already. And I look over and there's a pot of porpoise. Wow. And they're all just dancing around for me. And um, I just caught my breath and watched them for maybe like two, three minutes or something like that. And then um, the people who are sitting in the row in front of me finally came back from the cafeteria. And it turned out to be Shkeki, my Auntie Heather. Oh, and all her little cubs and um they just sat there in front of me and I think she knew she could tell that I had just been crying or something like that and she just gave me all the auntie love that she could and so I couldn't help but think but thinking like the ancestors knew that I was having a hard time and all the chukunadi came and held me up yeah yeah because they used the porpoise as their one of their crests and this, yeah, this what the request here was to write something for students who are returning for the spring semester, because my experience when I first went to college was like, 
the first time I went home and then when I went back to school, that was like the hardest time. That was the hardest time. And I remember this friend of mine, she was uh, Paiute and she was from Nevada and we're at the University of Minnesota and she was having a real tough time, just homesick that second semester, just really. And she was told us a story. She said, you know, last night I went down by the river and I was just crying and I was just lonely and I was just bummed out. And I just said, can somebody help me? I just kept thinking that. And she said, all of a sudden she just felt something and she looked over and there was a raccoon just sitting there next to her and just looking at her. And she just kind of stopped. And then she was just watching the water and it just sat there until she felt better. And as soon as she felt better, it got up and it just walked off, you know? And so it's really interesting to, to think about that stuff and to think about the request for help and, and what that results in sometimes. It's just really amazing. I have a similar too. When I was in Kosovo, my, my grandpa, uh, uh, Chukunidi, uh, <clears throat> he was getting sick and he, did, he was getting going down and I just asked for strength and uh, it was in Kosovo with the army and a raven went above the above me on a one of the buildings and just looked right down on me and just went off to where our soldiers were going what the heck <laughs> and i just was like thank you <laughs> wow okay it's cheesh yeah it show up for us you know quite a bit the the natural world cheesh okay two more sentences let's what do you folks think? Is uh, Chitra always? Always, yeah, what? Together, um, huge. Together. What about the Hannes teach? It's the perfective, or uh, not perfective. Progressive, I think. It's, yeah. Our, but I don't get the verb, the verb root doesn't jump out at me. The, the, the ch at the end is like always. Mm-hmm. So we will always be together. Yeah, oh well. So then that nastich is like this. And we're going to see this is all the same verb. Siti, wusiti, gufsiti, nastich. Uh, you could also have like sati, like the, the command form. Uh, and so just seeing like how that verb changes a lot. This is to be part of a group. This underline X is going to sort of mark what the group is. So you see, in we will be with you. Uh, you could, and then you can sort of just start to change these. Ach in they will be with me, right? And so, but then here, once you have chatak, that's going to push the verb to want to go to this ch ending, like it always is that way, and so. A verb that we might have heard this for would be, um, so if we look at this one, let's just jump over here. So here's this. So there is a related verb. So this one's usually going to want to have this, this n. Whoops. So it's going to want to have some kind of noun to be a noun, right, or to become a noun. But then there's another one where we could say that could go yati. That could go wuti. That could go. Um, we're usually gonna have ye in front of it, so it's gonna go kukwati, and then natich, and. So this is a, a same verb root, but a different verb. So this is to to be. It was. Will be. Always is and be that way so yay na teach like that's something uh there was one year we had graduation and uh K 
Ken Gasty, David Katzik was there watching someone graduate and he kept yelling, Ye na teach Klingit! Ye na teach Klingit! Like that's that's how the Klingit are. So Ye na teach means it's always that way, right? And so this is just sort of, just take another look at these verbs. So Chitak wuch in Hannes teach. We are always together. And the last part that's going to end with that again, Muchin Khanastich. Then we get Kushtiyach Wasaha Eidch Nashleye Eti. Everybody know what Kushtiyach is? It might be a new one for us. is uh, it doesn't matter or regardless and there's a few different ways there's probably three different ways to say this and it kind of depends on what you're saying but basically it's gonna say no matter what this thing we are always together and this one is here's another how statement wasa Ha'it comes from ha'idach. Nashle is a long ways away. Ye'iti, how far you are. So no matter how far away from us you are, we're always together. I'm going to put a Y on there. Okay. So there's, there's our message of hope after our dog message. Uh, but just some stuff. This came up last night. Some, you know, folks were asking for specific things. I just wanted to share it with you. And then um, just as we get back into it, like it's a bit of a slow, you start going slow. It's like you're walking on the slippery ice. And, and then we're going to start sort of going a little faster. And and just share some stuff like some some thoughts i had for this semester is, is we're going to keep looking at some of the grammar stuff we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into some of these concepts and then i think the rolling thing we're going to have is this big translation project uh, of a story by a kashkawu uh, his name was cyril george he was Kakwedi. and this was the first time i think that he'd ever been asked to record Tlingit, and so he told us stories in Tlingit. Uh, we recorded it downtown at the Sea Alaska Heritage Institute, and in the video you'll see Shteutin uh, Kathy Reddy, who brought him there, and you'll hear Ka Ishmael Hope, who was there when we recorded it. And uh, we're just going to go kind of line by line and and listen to it. So I will send you folks I'll put links on our class page to all the files that you need, and then we're going to walk through this program called Elon. I'll show it to you probably after the break. But then I think after the break, too, uh, we're going to listen to a speech by Na Cha, Jesse Dalton. And um, before we take our break, I'll give you a little bit of history of this recording. So this was recorded in Huna. Uh, I think, let's see, do I have, let me see if I can find the date of it. It was 1968. Uh, I've heard from a few people who were there. I believe it was recorded by Kahani, uh, Rosita Worrell. So, looking at the history of recording Klingit. We, we talked about this in a class uh, just this afternoon. Um, so in 1952, when Frederica de Laguna went to Yakutat, what do you think she recorded on? She recorded like some amazing Klingit. What do you think she used? Big reel-to-reel -reel deck like my dad had when I was growing up. That's what I thought. And it wasn't. Any other guesses?
I'm going to show you a picture, and this is not what it was, but I'm going to show you this picture and ask you what this thing is. What is this thing? I was wondering if it's there's aren't they like wax cylinders that they use? They recorded, I think there's music recordings from before the 20s. Yeah, so if you go yeah. pre-1920s, you're going to get wax cylinders. And there are some, uh, let's see, I think Louis Shotridge is recorded on a wax cylinder. There was a Kuik, a big Kuik in Sitka, where there's some speakers recorded on a wax cylinder. Very, very hard to hear. This is in the Downhower collection if you want to check some of it out. But what I used to hear about wax cylinders, like in my brain, it was a gigantic wax cylinder, like somebody's like cranking something. Like I had no idea how any of this stuff worked. Then I, um, I got invited to Philadelphia to go look at their collections. And they showed us this, and I'll zoom in here. When I looked at it, it looked like someone took like an album, like a record, and wrapped it around a toilet paper roll. And that's what I was like, that's a wax cylinder? I had no idea. And it could fit about three minutes of audio, which uh, the person showing us this said, that's why pop songs are like three minutes long, because that's all that could fit on, on, a, on a wax cylinder. And then it, it sort of translated over to the little records that you know but uh that's also not what was this was recorded on what it was recorded on uh de laguna uh, where'd my picture go was this and i wish i had gotten a better picture but it's a little spool of wire and i thought how why i don't even know how this technology works uh but this is the de laguna this is original clinket by f de laguna uh, if you go up and i first walked by this cabinet it says use wire recording technology when she recorded clinket in 1952. and i just threw my hands up in the air i was like i don't know anything about anything i don't know how anything works in the whole world <laughs> but after this wire technology came the reel to reels these big ampex things and so there are a few Schengen people who had them uh i think as rosita was telling me about it she said i don't remember who got one first she got one nora got one johnny marks had one and uh forrest dewitt i know those were the four main ones i think that had these reel to reels in the 1960s and they would just pack them around Nora said uh, people used to tease her and say, yeah, you beat Nick carrying around your tape recorder and the, the elders didn't want to be recorded. They wouldn't talk into it. They didn't like it. But once they realized, like, one, how quickly the language was getting lost and two, how useful of a thing it could be, it, it made a transformation among the Shinget people, an absolute transformation. So, uh, there was another Katye, uh, David Kadishan and Ida Kadishan, amazing Tlingit speakers. So Ida called up Nora and said, your uncle's passing away. He says, I want my niece to record me one last time. She just grabbed her tape recorder and just jumped on a plane to Huna. And then during this Kuik in 1968, they had all this atu laid out all over the place. And they had Natla, she was asked to stand up and to speak on this atu. And they hung the recorder from the ceiling. And but you'll you'll hear like she's not that close to it. But this is the first thing I think where anybody ever tried, as far as I know of, to write out all of the Shinget and then write out all of the English. So with De Laguna, we're able to translate a lot of her work because she had interpreters there who could actively translate as they're recording. So like there'd be this big long recording and then someone giving a summary of what was being said. And that summary has helped us a lot because it's tough stuff. So it's really tough in terms of understanding. It. So we'll take a break and then we'll come back and we'll listen to Natla. And we'll be able to watch the speech and I'll, I'll put the link to the recording up. I'll put the link to the uh, I think I had the speech in its own somewhere. I just grabbed it from Hatu Nagu. Yes. But uh, when 
Nora Marks Dauenhauer met Richard Dauenhauer. She was working on this project. She was scared of Jesse Dalton. She was scared of doing this type of work because it was daunting. And this is the type of work we're going to do this semester, so it's going to get you ready. But uh, I don't know. Take uh, how long a break we need? Five minutes? Okay, take six minutes. Come back in six minutes. I, oops. That's okay. I, I just wanted to um, share, and I can put it in the chat as I saw on KINY, the, um, the new Gumboat, Gumboots Go series that uh, Tlingit Haida put together for kids. And um, they have eight videos posted on their YouTube channel. And it sounds like, I mean, Rene, you probably know more about it. But um, yeah, they, they look great. Yeah, that's a really fun series, and so uh, I was excited to be involved with a couple of the videos. So we did one on deer hunting, and it was pretty fun to go out there and then to uh, translate myself. It was pretty fun. Uh, and I had a, a big, ugly mustache, too. It was pretty fun to, to do that series and to, like, think about things that I would say and want to teach to kids about deer um, which maybe before we look at this video oh I said I was going to show you folks something so I'll show you the names for anybody know the the different names for a male deer I saw it in that video <laughs> <laughs> so let me show you. I learned this from George Davis it was really Really fun. There's a bunch of different ways to describe the horns I have written down somewhere, like when they're just sprouting and then different different ages. Yeah, it's pretty fun. And so we were talking about this too, I think I think yesterday. No, this was with the language nest, you know. Um so there's these stages of life that the language talks about. So one is tokenei. So that's a baby. But then when baby starts to be able to walk around, it kind of, it then the, the kinship to the terms for that baby sort of get attached to gender a little bit. So there's shatkiatsku and yedakutsku. So they both have kutsku in it, which means adolescent. And so the shatki is like the girl, and then the ya, yeduk is a boy. So then, um, Shatkiatsku and Yedakwetsku. When they get old enough, when they have passed puberty, now you've got Shatk and Yeduk. So they're still young, but they could technically make more people. So you gotta keep your eye on them and, and stuff. Then you get to Yis Shawat and Yis Ka. So they are young. But certainly, like old school Tlingit, like Shot and Yaduk, they could, you could just marry them up if you wanted to. Like every culture you go back far enough, kids are marrying very, very young. Uh, and then Yis Ka and Yis Shawat would probably be like late teens, early 20s, and then you get Shawat Ka, and then you can make your choice about what to come after that. Yan Wat is pretty common. Uh, you could say Shawat Shan and Ka Shan, but do so carefully because that means old woman and old man. Uh, but those are people and their sort of life stages. It's in the it's in the dictionary when you look up Yaduk or Shatkiatsku. They should all be listed in each and you know, under each entry. And I believe that that's the way it was as well with animals. So you had. Um, like say you have a black bear. In my mind, seek yedi means it's still nursing. Seek katsku means it's done nursing, but still with mama. And then you get to seek, and then it's just, it's on its own. So it's important to note that because if you've got katsku, 
That means you could tell people just by saying that word. Like, yeah, there it is, but watch out for the mom, right? Don't get between it and the mom. You could communicate that stuff pretty easily. So with a with a deer, uh, this is the case for a male deer. So they are all called Kuwakan. If you're from Teslin, it's Kuwakan. Uh, and that word also means a peacemaker. So uh, if two clans or communities, but it's usually two clans, were in some sort of dispute, and it could be mild or it could be major, they might bring in someone who knows the culture, knows ceremony, and is a good negotiator who could sort of go to the first clan and say, what's going on? And they might say, okay, we, we brought this person over to do a totem pole and we paid them what we think it's worth and they're angry because they didn't think we paid them enough and so that's the big dispute. So then they would go over to the other clan and say, what's up? And it's okay, they said they'd give us this, but then they end up giving us this and we're mad because they broke their agreement. So then it's a mediator. The Kua Khan would then probably get the two sides together and say, okay, here's what I think we should do. Uh, you said you'd pay this, so go ahead and pay that, and then we'll just we'll consider it done. And and sometimes it was really big things, like someone got killed or some big thing happened. But they would make it right, and then they would they would fix it, and then they would end up with a new name, which is usually some noun, kuakan, tegitkaya kuakan, bunha kuakan. If you look through lists of names, you'll find shawat kuakan. There's names with deer right after it. That means peacemaker. So the male deer has several different names. Um, they're kind of listed, I think, alphabetically here. But as far as phases of growth, shakunts is a deer that has little little antlers starting to come up. So it's a potato head. Shakunts. When I was looking up uh, zoot different ways and looking at earrings, I saw a sentence and I got to figure out where I wrote it down. But it was like like they're starting to sprout horns. It's just like that. So I got to find that. I had like three or four sentences on that type of thing. Okay, sheesh. The next phase is shataka. So this is spearhead. When you got single point, one point antler. Uh, and so you see sha on there. And so you see sha and kunz. Sha taka. So taka is also a spear. It's the one that pokes. Next phase is shakshakisht. So that is barbecue fork. That's when the, you get one split, so you get the double horn on each one. And then the full grown is shashatsao or shakshatsao, which is crab head. So now you got full on crab on the head, and that's that's your target. That's what you're really looking for when you're out looking around for a deer. Uh, so that's pretty fun. Uh, you also have Yagut, which is a young deer. Um, there's that. And now here's the big cheat sheet that I said I was going to show you too. So stem variation is going to be your next phase in looking at verbs. And we're going to, we'll look at this stuff a little bit later. But as we go through, there's these main verb modes, right? Let me zoom in here on these modes. So what are we talking about when we say mode? They, they've got these kind of fancy names and there's some discussion going on about which ones we should keep and what should we, what should we do with these names? A progressive imperfective means it's in the process of happening. You usually get yana, kena, yena. So yana gut, ya ana squeen, ya ana squeen. Uh, so you're going to have ya or K or Ye, and then Na. It means it's in this process of happening. Perfective means let's talk about it, whether or not it has happened. It doesn't really have to do with time, but this is when you get the W built into it. Ich sitin, I see you or I saw you. A negative perfective means it definitely it did not happen. So this is usually did happen or became that way. 
didn't happen, didn't become that way. Imperative is a command. So if you're going to make someone do it, like, nata, it's right there. <clears throat> Perfective, habitual, that was what we saw with nestich or yenatich, uh, natech, stuff like that. So it's going to end with a ch. Future, going to happen, going to be that way. Negative future, not going to happen, not going to be that way. Hortative, let it be that way, let them do it. So like nachtuat, yen kati, stuff like that. <clears throat> Repetitive imperfective means it happens regularly. Like yu ayatank, yu akanik. So uh, it, it happens on a regular basis. And then potentials uh, might happen, might not happen, no way it can happen. It's a kind of a special category. They're, they're kind of complicated in terms of how you put them all together. And then conditional, which is like every time this happens, this other thing happens. So the one thing that we look at is what happens in the prefix. And there's a bunch of stuff that pops up. And this whole chapter in How Sine Chayu Atangi goes through like a, it shows you this sort of guide on how to put these together. And we're going to start, we're look at this stuff this semester, not today, but this semester. But in terms of what should the stem be? Should it be short and high, long and high, or long and low? And this thing tells you what it will be. But there's a couple of different factors. Well, there's, there's three things that, that factor into this. One is what's the verb mode? Is it a perfective? Is it a future? That's going to be like one of the things that drives it. The second thing is going to be, is it, what's the conjugation? And typically you have zero or na, ga, or ka. So zero is on its own category. And we know if it's a zero, it pops up in the command form. Ha. That's how you say eat it. And you don't hear anything before it, but you say nata for go to sleep. So you know that's a na. And you say igate, telling someone to be good. And then you know that's ga. And then you'll say qasatin, uh, see it. And that's uh, that's ka conjugation or qashat, grab it. The third thing is the stem type. And here's what here's the biggest thing you need to know about stem type. When you look it up, if there's a little h, well, one it's you're gonna have open or closed. Open means it ends with a vowel. Closed means it ends with a consonant. There's open, and then there's this with this little h after it. We call it fading. The only difference is when you go into these this perfective mode the fading usually stays low. That's the only thing. It, was, it usually likes to stay low um, when you add that. And same with the repetitive imperfective. Like that's the only difference with fading roots. When you get to the closed roots, the only thing you have to know is they will all follow the same pattern, but if the root is marked high in the, in the theme, it won't go low. That's all you need to remember. There's there's a little bit more behind it, but that's the mechanics of it. Is it's either going to be, it's it'll be this, but if there's no low version, it'll stay high. That's all. That, that's the big difference between these two. Uh, well, this it shows three of them, but these two are actually identical. If you look through this whole thing, you'll see they're exactly the same. And what this shows you: consonant, vowel, consonant, single vowel. It's short, two vowels, it's long. High tone, it's high, no tone, it's low. So this will show you when, when you want to sort of put those things together. Uh, however, there is one more that's not on here. Uh, that would be, there's a little X up above it. Like where this H is, there'd be a little X right there. And that means it never changes. Like the verb chan, to love. It's always short and high. Always. Doesn't matter. Chen, 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 chen. That's stem. We're going to look at that this semester. But uh, 
Oh, it's on brought it up, so I thought I'd just show you folks this. This is in the, it's in there. Uh, you can also go through, as we look at verb modes, like say we want to look at the future. So what this thing shows you is sometimes if there's parentheses, that means sometimes that thing will be there. Sometimes there's K, sometimes there's Ye for a future verb. Like this is why you say Su Ye Ik Kwasatin. Then there's got, if there's an object, it'll be there. Every one of them will have ga, u, and ga. All three of those things must be there for every future verb, non-negotiable. It's like these three little switches. You activate these three things, you've got a future verb. But they contract in different ways. If there's a subject, it'll pop up right there. I guess I should put those in parentheses. The classifier must be minus i. It has to be a minus i version of the classifier. So then it shows you down here. It's got to be zero, da, sa, s, sha, sh, sh, or sh. Those are the only options for your classifier. And then the root for the future will always be long and high. The future, as far as stem variations, the easiest one to learn. Future plus, long and high. Future negative, long and low. Every single time. Suye ekosatin. Kesh suye ekosatin. Right? Then it shows you the pre verb. Should you use ye or k or nothing? It's all determined by the conjugation type. If it's ga, you have to have k. K kwa k. K guchatin. There's no way around that. It has to be there. If it's ka, then you have to have ye. Ye a guchtagan. Ye ikhosatin. So there you go. Everything more you wanted to know, more than you wanted to know. I guess what we'll call this. Dick Down Howard used to call his chapters that. The more than you wanted to know chapter. Can I ask, did I read that there is no pattern? There's no, for imperfective, plus or negative, there is no pattern, right? It's just everything's variable. Did I read that? We don't know how to predict the pattern for the stem variation of an imperfective. That's true. It's cheese. As far as we, we've, yeah, there's, you just got to sort of look it up and just, you, that's when, you, at this point, as far as we know, you just have to remember it. Okay, and sheesh. Uh, well, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get a slow crawl up to that stuff. But since we started talking about it at the beginning, before we started class, I thought I'd show you folks. So to close off, uh, we got 30 minutes left, but I, we're going to look at Natla. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the audio for this. Uh, I'm very thankful to Sea Alaska Heritage Institute for finding the audio for this. And then we will um, we'll scroll through the page. And so I will put both this chapter and also the recording up so that you folks can listen to it again later as well. Okay, here it is.
That's the recording. I mean, it's, it's hard to hear in a couple places. Like the microphone's like not really close to her. Uh, she speaks very fast. It's very fluid. Uh, she names an awful lot of people. The way it was explained to me was they sort of kind of cleared a lot of space in the room, put all these tables with, typically before a kuik would happen, there'd be these tables brought out on one side and all the raven side at u would be there and all the eagle side at u would be over there and they would be there uh before things started or kind of at at the starting point i guess but before any speeches or songs sort of began and so they they had all the stuff moved to the center of the room and she went around and she was pointing at these things and talking and and then talking to specific people who were from the clans that the objects were belonging to and making references specifically to them. A lot of metaphorical things basically tied to the specific things that were on the atu. Uh, pretty amazing speech and, and a lot to sort of go through. I'll probably retype it just so that we can have the, it's, you know, the, the Tlingit and the English are right next to each other and you could scroll through a little easier and make the text a little bit bigger. Uh, and it's 
yeah, there's lots of kinship terms in here, lots of other things. The revealing the face is in there quite a bit. Um, so that's a verb that uh, is used quite a bit in ceremony. And the way it's, I can remember one time King Gacy was in our class and we were using that verb and, and he was like, it's like you could see them poking out, peering out from behind a tree or something. Um, and it's, it's also a verb used to sort of have a blanket and to, to dance and then put your face, reveal your face. That would work as well. So that's how we would talk about it too. When I was growing up too, is we would dance and we pull a blanket down. Yeah. So it was like one of my first dance lessons too. Okay. Okay. And yeah, and being from Huna, there's probably lots of names in here that you'll recognize. There's also some really, really old names in here, like Yokisko Kayak, that's Raven's uncle that he defeated. That's another name for the moon. That literally means tide controller. Uh, so here we have qaqanch, so the sun is doing the verb. Akat utsuch. So there's a verb in there for moving a stick-like object, and it's the same verb you would use for the hokey pokey. We we're just qaqanchan and I were just talking about that. So it's you would use it for raise your hands or something, and it's a plural, right? So sock is the singular version of that one. Su is the plural. Um, so with any of these, like there's so many different spots you could come in and take a deep dive at particular sentences. You also, as you go through this as an intermediate learner, you'll start spotting these CHs popping up. There's one that, well, that's a different one. Um, I just saw one, gahukch, right? So. Then you'll start to sink and so you're at a point now where you should be looking for patterns and trying to sort of figure these things out and say okay that's that happens all the time type of thing right and then once you get to the then you should be able to isolate the verb root and then sort of go from there so it's to always be dry other thoughts Questions. Kune, did I read that the, like the uh, ch that always, is different depending on the type of verb. Like ch is for certain kind of verbs, and then uh, underlined x for a different kind. Or, uh, well, if you're looking at, so we'll go back to here. So the ones that we're seeing here, are what we call a perfective habitual, which means happens every time. So like this is the yena teach one. This is you say talk kanach talk with hoots. The brown bear sleeps through the winter. So it's the ch that's going to pop up, and it is going to require the conjugation prefix to be there. Um, and so this one, it always gets a CH on it for this particular verb. There's a related verb, uh, which is the repetitive imperfective, which means it happens on a regular basis. This one could have an underline X, it could have a K, or it could have a CH, depending on the conjugation class of the verb. So for example, you see here, they hold it regularly. Um, they write it regularly. Uh, they work on a regular basis. And so a lot of it's going to be determined on, um, there's some qualities of the verb. So you will see a CH on there though, but it's just going to be for ga and ga conjugation. Oh. Any in the mm -hmm. thoughts? Oh, nay. Ah. 
listening to the, the not law recording, as long as I was following your cursor, I could, she was actually very clear to understand, even though there was a lot of background noise. Right. That helps me. And so really amazing. And, you know, going back in the technology realms, you know, they're probably, I want to say that's the 1970s when they're working on this recording. So they might have migrated it from the reel to reel to a cassette tape, but maybe not at that point. Maybe that's more like the 80s. Um, and so to think of like using an actual reel, like play, rewind, play, rewind, play. And, and so I'm going to show you folks some of the technology we're using these days. So there are a couple of things that work in our favor is one is sometimes you can get a cleaner, but if you listen to the De Laguna stuff, like it's a very clean recording of the De Laguna stuff. Um, uh, maybe like next week or sometime soon, we'll listen to some of the Frank Italio recordings, but they, they are, they're very clean. Uh, let's see. Okay. So this program is called Elon. Uh, let's see if I can get it to work. So here we have like a time aligned thing. And so what we do is you can see here, let me try to make this a little bigger. So you can see where the phrase is. Uh, so you can see the audio, you can see the video, you can sort of highlight an area and play just that thing. Let's see if I make sure I shared my audio. Okay. So for example, oops. Oops, it's supposed to only play. To ati yayagi. And then you can listen to as many times as you want. Gun as cheese jeha to ati yayagi. So, what I'd like to try is in the chat if you want, or you could just say it. Um, the technology we need now, like there, there's some technology that I think has really helped over the last five or six years. And one is being able to play the audio directly through the computer to you folks, which was five years ago. I couldn't figure out how to do that. Um, but the other technology we need now is someone make someone else type it. OK, someone else, it's your turn to type. But um, what are you folks hearing in this? Phrase. The end. Two ati. Right, so and then as we give it a close listen, we can hear those tones, we can hear the vowel lengths and everything. And now we get to translate it. Does, I'm not familiar with this software. Does it slow it down? Like if you were really struggling? Yeah, so there's this rate thing right here. So we could turn it down to 50. And what it does is the software kind of, I think it slices it and stretches it. So it gets a little bit kind of robotic sounding, but it doesn't 
slow, you know, so it doesn't change the pitch of it, which is pretty interesting. And Cyril did he George. Say, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, Cyril George, cadence of two is a good learning uh, pattern. It's just, I like to hear his speak. It's not very, it's a good pace. Yeah, he's got a nice pace. He always had like this kind of big, boomy voice, and he gave lots of space in between his work. Like, I think he knew he was talking to learners quite a bit, right? When you slowed it down, did he say yay, Yaki, or ya? Yeah? When I see Jehato, I see Yayaki. Let's see, yeah. You could probably argue for a bit of a, you know, maybe a bit of this on there. So when I see Jehato, I see Yayaki. I'd probably just say, yeah. What was that? I feel thankful today. And when you're doing this type of work, sometimes you might have a good idea as far as like end punctuation, but usually you either take a guess, like maybe I'll put a, a comma on there and I might come back later and change it to a period. So then you go to the next phrase. <laughs> Okay. The video looks a little off to me, but it's our okay. grandchildren. We gotta get the thing at first, yeah. Oh, my bad. Uh Dutch did he say Oh yeah. Oh. My hand. Jinda. Ach chin to so a she yade. To su, su. Uh, go down. Has do. Has do. I'll remove the capital there. And sometimes like you could set this up. So um, it's really flexible, but it's not like the most user friendly thing. There's a bunch of stuff you could do. Like sometimes you might set up, they're called tiers. So you might add a tier and you'll make the parent tier the utterance and you'll call this uh, maybe like we call it direct translation perhaps and so we could even start here and I could say my hand at uh, they touched towards here right and so uh, let me change something on here And change the font of this real quick. Okay. 
Okay, so then you've you've got sort of like a do a bit more of a line by line, word by word translation. And this one, uh, if we go back, we say, I feel thankful today our grandchildren led me here by the hand. And so we're going to kind of go through this. Uh, this is a, about a 30 minute story. There's a lot to it. Um, what I'm going to do is sort of, I'll post the whole thing so you can, this software is called Elon. It's free. Uh, if you just do an internet search, E-L-A-N software, uh, I'll show you folks. So we'll go to Windows up here. So we'll go. Whoops, what did I do? Oh, maybe I did that wrong. Oh, I froze. Okay, there. Did I freeze? My computer went dark for a second. Okay. So if I do an internet search for Elon software, it gets me to this language archive. Uh, I can go here or straight to this download. Uh, so this is made by linguists for doing language work. You'll pick the one that matches your computer. So if you have a Windows-based computer, you'll take this one. If you have a Mac, you'll take this one. If you have one of the newer Macs with the the M1 chip, you'll take this one. If you're running Linux, I don't know, then you'll do this one, and then you'll install it. Uh, if you are using a Mac, it, it, it has a bit of a strange installation procedure in that it'll just run from your downloads folder. So you kind of want to drag it into your uh, applications folder. And I can walk you folks through on how to build your own files, but for now, I would say just focus on um, just focus on running the one that we have. And so when you're using this software, and I don't really recommend, um, I mean, maybe try it out. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a phrase, you're going to highlight it, and I'll put this whole this file up exactly like it is. So you'll see this text on there already when you listen to it. Uh, oh, that's the same sentence here. But you'll double click in this first thing. It's a little clunky sometimes. Um, but when you double click here, then you'll type the thing it. Oops. And then you'll. But once you have typed the clink it under this tier that's called utterance you can double click underneath it and it'll have the same length of time and so you could say so they could hear it and then and they has to and then you end up sort of sometimes going back and sort of putting it a together and at this phase my suggestion is just practice it um, we're 30 seconds into this thing my goal is going to be to do about well, we got to do about two minutes per week right and if we're going to get through the whole thing uh two if it's 15 week semester it's a 30 minute recording that's kind of how the math works but just as you're doing this, just write down anything that you're hearing. And then if, if you're totally lost, we'll, we'll take a close listen to it. And we're going to try and sort of get through most of this uh, recording. I'm going to give you a bit of a sneak preview. So we asked him to talk about two things. We asked him to talk about the mosquito story. 
And then we asked him to talk about the migration when people went back inland after, during, and after the flood, and then when they returned back to the coast. So those are probably the things that you're going to hear. Uh, it's pretty, it's really deep level Tlingit, so this is going to supplement the other activities that we're going to do. Uh, starting next week, we'll sort of kick back up with our lessons, things we're trying to focus on, learning how to spot verbs, look them up, and, and do a bunch of that stuff. So, any questions before we go? So over the weekend, uh, just try this stuff out. So probably later tonight, I'll upload this video to our class webpage. I will also upload the Elon file, the video, and the audio so that you'll, you'll have to, in a folder on your computer, you're going to have to put the video, the audio, and the Elon file. They all have to be in the same folder. So next week, we'll also troubleshoot anything with Elon. But try it out. I think it's a very useful program to use to try and sort of write down what you're hearing and work on this translation process. And some of these, they're, they're, they're pretty tough, but I'll, we'll just do the stuff together. So this story has not been translated yet, so it's pretty exciting. Good cheesh. Have a great weekend. Folks are awesome. Good cheesh. Uh, Kune, uh, my friend Gabe wants to join. She's, um, yeah, so she's signing up for this also. Fabulous. Siagin. Siagin. Good cheese. Good cheese.